Uh, moving on, we all hate it when the price goes up at the petrol bowser, but as world oil supplies start to stagnate and we hit what's called peak oil, we may look back on a $1.50 a litre as the least of our worries. Oil, that is. Black gold. Texas tea. I love that show, especially Ellie May. Oh, Ellie May. Anyway, where was I? Ah, oh, right. Peak oil, doom and gloom, etc, etc. It's a term that's long been bandied about, but what does it really mean? Good, Good question, question, Charlie. Charlie. Peak oil doesn't mean we've run out, it means we've extracted the best stuff. There's tons of it left, just lesser quality, harder to get to, more expensive, reserves will enter decline. Here's a cool graphic. Currently the world consumes 89 million barrels of oil a day. That's 32 billion a year. It takes up to 300 million years to form, yet we've burned roughly half of it in just 125 years. Now I'm no expert, but that doesn't sound very sustainable. We use oil for almost everything we do, from the obvious to the surprising. And as emerging economies boom, the thirst for oils hit fever pitch. So it seems the writing's on the wall. Soon oil will be in decline and we'll have to think of a plan B. So just how ready is Australia for the inevitable changes to come? In the time that that tape piece ran, the world consumed 10,560,000 litres of oil. Bruce Robinson is the convener of the Australian Association uh, for the study of peak oil. First of all, give it to us straight, Doc. How long have we got before we hit peak oil? Uh, that's a good question. No one knows. It could be uh, a couple of years or five or seven. Uh, we won't know till afterwards, probably, but, but it's, it's likely to be soon. Bruce, I've got to say, I've only ever heard one politician talk about that, and that was a state politician in Queensland. What, what is government policy on peak oil? Uh, the state and federal government policy on peak oil is very largely to ignore it, hope it'll go away, stick their head in the sand or, or somewhere else. Uh, <laughs> local government is taking the issue more seriously. It's easier for local governments to, to look at it. Bruce, in real terms, how do you think we'll feel the immediate impact? Well, that, that's a, a good question. If we prepare, it's going to be a lot easier. It's a bit like having a, a bushfire plan. If we prepare in advance, everyone's got good plans, they know what to do if something happens, we're a lot better off than currently. No one's got any plans, any clues, and everyone's being kept in the dark. So if the state and federal governments don't have a plan, what can we do? I, I ride my bike to work every day, so presumably I'm pretty much saving the world. <laughs> uh, you're not saving the world, but you're keeping yourself fitter and uh, you're helping immunise your sense about a, against automobile dependence. If we're all uh, f physically and emotionally attached to our cars, then if suddenly we can't use the cars, it's going to be very hard. If we're all used to walking and riding bikes, public transport, then we're better off. Bruce, you look trustworthy, but I don't want to believe you, to be honest. Uh, how confident are you you're right? Oh, well, a lot of it, it's natural, and state and federal governments don't want to believe anything about peak oil. The geology and the engineering is unmistakable. We just can't, can't avoid the, the idea that the world's been finding less oil since the 1960s. Since the 1980s, the world's been using more oil every year than has been found. Sooner or later, we're going to come to a crunch, and it's, it's likely to be sooner rather than later. So the world runs out of oil. Are we talking about going back to pre-industrial days? Uh, I think that's, uh, that's unlikely. The, we, the more likely scenario is that we go back to the sort of situation we had in the 1980s or 1970s or 1960s. People still travel then, there were still cars and still aeroplanes, but just a lot less use. If we avoid the wasteful uses of oil and concentrate on the important things like uh, transport of fuel, like bringing in the harvest, uh, and we leave the, the unimportant things like taking unfit kids to school uh, in, in a beast four-wheel drives when they could walk or ride. You know, there's, there's incredible. There's, there's trucks riding around metropolitan areas full of bottled water when there's perfect, better, perfectly good water, probably better water, coming out of taps. And if we prioritise it and if the governments have plans, then we're going to be much better off. So when we run out of oil, I'm just going to blame fat kids, OK? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much for scaring the hell out of everyone here tonight, Bruce. Nice chatting to you. Oh, that's all right. It's fun scaring the hell out of people. <laughs> Particularly scary, the CSIRO is, says possibly by 2018, petrol will be $8 a litre. $8 a litre. What about air, air travel? I mean, how are bogus going to get to Bali? <laughs> <laughs> And this is not some conspiracy theory. I mean, the oil executives are aware of it. They admit that peak oil is coming, so it's something that's going to have to be but dealt with. But its ability with. to affect people, like some people have even said, be careful what shares are in your super portfolio, because if you've got aeroplane, you know, airline shares, mm. they're not going to be worth as much because people won't be able to afford to fly. It's going to affect so many parts of our lives.
Yeah, it's, I'm freaked out, honestly. I am. I'm freaked out. <laughs> We've got feedback already. Judy says, uh, when I run out of oil, I find a dab of butter or margarine will do the trick. I think she's... <laughs> she's on a different track, I believe, Judy. We're going to take a quick break. Plenty more after this. Stack up.